Hi guys. It is a hot, windy, soon to be 96 degree day in April here. The collapse of global industrial civilization in uh, Garfield, Texas. Uh, 96 degrees today in April. Uh, I'm doing everything I can. I am very thrilled to say the buyer on this house. We've been out here all day with home inspectors and roof inspectors and septic pumpers and spent a thousand dollars today between the two of us. The buyer has signed off on all his inspections so uh, we need to get the appraisal on this house and it looks like I will be wrapping up in the state of Texas and moving to New York maybe. So anyway, since it is Friday, April 24th, 2020, doing what I do every Friday uh, over here. Oh yeah, by the way, this is Collapse Chronicles. My name is Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot. Sancho Panza doing what we do every Friday and that's going over to my favorite environmental newsletter uh, mangabay.com which you know goes around the planet uh, looking at all of the ways this planet and our fellow earthlings are collapsing this week. Now of course there's one problem is that this is no longer the corona panic Chronicles that I do not cover stories on the corona panic and since over half I would say two-thirds of the stories on Manga Bay today are about how the uh, corona panic is bad news for our fellow earthlings in the planet this is just the latest week's worth of evidence uh, uh, of how this corona panic is, is, is killing our fellow earthlings by the millions is what it boils down to. But since I'm not allowed to talk about the number one story on the planet uh, on Collapse Chronicles, it'll just be pretty much uh, Manga Bay doing what they do week after week, month after month, year after year, uh, since, you, since nobody wants to hear uh, what they're talking about this week, they just will just go back to their, to their usual uh, ways the planet is collapsing this week that has nothing to do with the C word. Okay, first article, C word. Uh, all right, I don't believe it. The, uh, this is a vital mangrove forest hidden in Vietnam's largest city could be at risk. Yes, uh, unbelievable that a mangrove forest is still surviving. Uh, it actually came back, it said it was destroyed by Agent Orange by the U.S. Army, uh, you know, poisoned this mangrove forest. Uh, but it actually has come back and now that it has come back from Agent Orange uh, we see development plans and aquaculture pose threats to the mangrove forest but of course you know you know that every mangrove forest on the planet is going under the ocean uh, Anyway, let's go over there to Papua New Guinea. On the brink of a coal boom, Papuans ask who will benefit. Across Indonesia, a huge and poorly regulated coal industry has generated enormous wealth for investors that left local people behind. Hmm, imagine that to deal with the impacts of environmental degradation. The country's easternmost Papua region has several untapped coal reserves, but the central government is working on a plan to open up New Guinea for coal mining. Yes, uh, you will. 
will not believe this, but uh, according to one investigation, uh, do you believe that uh, a coal company was granted exploration rights in the rainforest? Uh, the company is closely connected to local and national power players. Yes, there you go. Uh, let's see. Here is an article on how aquaculture is going to save the planet in uh, in mangabay.com oh okay well okay these are what they're talking about is uh, you know growing freshwater fish in ponds uh, I, I don't have quite the problem with uh, freshwater aquaculture they're, they're talking about confined ponds well hell I, you know, I grew up in Georgia. We've had uh, how many uh, catfish ponds? Anyway, uh, okay. That's all they're talking about. Uh, here's a look at how some of the new uh, apocalyptic ways about how we're going to engineer our way out of dirty energy. Engineers have explored harnessing gravity, tapping the unique structures of a smelly fruit, meaning using durian fruit, uh, to save the planet. Uh, there you go. I assume that is a tongue-in-cheek article, but you never can tell about Manga Bay, they are apparently Rhett Butler has not watched uh, that new movie Planet of the Humans. I would recommend Rhett Butler and anybody else uh, still you know, suffering some absurd notion that renewable energy is going to save the planet from the evils of fossil fuels would you please drop everything you're doing and watch uh, planet of the humans over here on YouTube okay well we cannot talk about uh, this story about wildlife tourism grinding to a halt. We cannot talk about this story how governments are weakening environmental standards all over this planet. We cannot talk about this story about uh, the dots between forest fires and dude uh, Anyway, we cannot talk about the bushmeat trade in wildlife markets because nobody wants to hear it. Okay, is this a story we can actually talk about? In famed Chico Mendez Reserve, Brazil nut harvesters fight to save the forest. Yes, the Chico Mendez Extractive Reserve, I love that name, Extractive Reserve, was named in honor of the rubber tapper who was assassinated for pushing back against the deforestation of, his, of this part of Brazil for cattle pastures. Uh, today, the, the reserve's inhabitants have moved from tapping rubber to harvesting Bra Brazil nuts. Uh, however, the Brazil nut industry remains largely informal and unregulated and is seasonal, which forces many of the extractivists to turn to 
cattle ranching during the rest of their year, rest of the year to supplement their income, and clearing forest for livestock pasture is the main driver of deforestation inside the reserve, which so far this year has recorded the highest rate of forest loss of any protected area, protected area in Brazil. Okay, you will not believe this, guys, you will not believe this, but obstacles abound in bid to protect Indonesia's forest. Do you think so? And cut emissions. Deforestation and land use changes are the main drivers of greenhouse gas emissions in India, making the protection of forests there crucial in reducing the country's emissions. But an analysis by academics finds a huge swath of forest can still potentially be cleared because it lies within logging and plantation concessions with few requirements for cons logging and oil palm plantation concessions to conserve them. Hmm, do you think so? The new analysis finds Indonesia can easily fall short of its pledged emissions reductions goal if these forests are allowed to be cleared, which looks increasingly likely under the provisions of a deregulation bill expected to be passed soon. There you go. Okay, another story I cannot uh, say. Now, this, this next one, I mentioned this last week, I, even though it has a C-word connection, talking about the Earth Optimism Summit. Uh, <laughs> having to go online that the, uh, the Earth Optimism Summit was canceled, so instead they're bringing it online. Okay, I cannot have a story about poaching rising in Cambodia because that is not allowed for me to mention. Okay, I cannot do a story about the fight against Amazon destruction at stake because it is a story about the C word and nobody wants to hear a story about uh, the fight against Amazon destruction being at stake because it goes against the grain of the fear-mongering media. All right. Well, we cannot have a story about panic buying uh, and what that means for the planet because nobody wants to hear it. And if I were to mention that story, I would be called a Trump tard, uh, Alex Jones, uh, right wing conspiracy theorist if I read that story. Okay, can we have, I right, do not believe it. We have a story that, does, that is not about the C word. For the Mediterranean, the Suez Canal is a wormhole bringing in alien invaders. An influx of Indo-Pacific species has invaded the Mediterranean Sea via the Suez Canal, changing the sea's ecology and threatening the region's fisheries. Climate change is amplifying the invasion by stressing endemic populations and creating new space for invasive species. Do you think so? Uh... Experts say what is needed 
is collaboration by Mediterranean countries to develop and execute adequate management policy before the situation gets worse. Okay, we can I cannot mention the a story about Thailand's elephants facing starvation because nobody wants to hear it. I cannot do this story out of Madagascar because nobody wants to hear it. I cannot even do a story about Earth Day uh, because nobody wants to hear it. Okay. Now, of course, it, it was the uh, 50th anniversary of Earth Day this past week, but it was also the 10-year uh, anniversary of the BP Deepwater Horizon spill. Okay, doesn't appear to be a C-word uh, connection to the Deepwater Horizon spill. Decade after BP Deepwater Horizon spill, oil drilling is as dangerous as ever. Ten years ago, the BP Deepwater Horizon exploratory rig exploded, initialing the largest oil spill in the history of the United States. Yes, nearly five million barrels of oil spilled into the Gulf of Mexico. Some people would say it's still spilling into the Gulf of Mexico, causing catastrophic damage to the ecosystem and economy of the region. Yes, a newly published report uh, looks back uh, at how this spill happened and if this catastrophe has changed government or oil industry approaches to offshore oil drilling. Poor government oversight and inadequate safety culture paved the way for the BP Deepwater Horizon explosion. Now, a decade later, it appears these conditions, the prerequisites for the next disaster, have not improved. Do you think so? Okay. Uh, let's see. Here is another. I don't believe that we have a <coughs> we have an African conservationist who did not die of a bullet through the head and died of cancer. Okay, now if you, uh, if, if you watch that uh, excellent documentary, Planet of the Humans, they spend a lot of time talking about biomass, the absolute joke that biomass is any way, shape, or form sustainable, green, whatever little corporate greenwashing words you want to use for it. And so I think they actually mentioned BlackRock in that uh, documentary. Okay. As investment giant BlackRock pulls back from coal, Environmentalists urge the same for biomass energy. BlackRock, the world's largest asset management corporation, announced in January that it would start reducing investments in coal during coal due to the, that fuel's role in climate change. Environmental organizations loud the move but say it's not enough. Yes. In March, a coalition of 32 organizations from 17 countries delivered a letter stating that burning biomass was even more polluting than burning coal and asking BlackRock to also divest its stake in UK-based Drax, operator of the world's largest wood-burning power plant. Biomass energy 
is commonly produced by burning wood pellets. Critics of the wood pellet industry say it produces tons of carbon emissions while leveling old growth and managed forest in the U.S. Southeast and Eastern Europe needed for carbon sequestration, biodiversity protection, and resiliency from increasingly intense storms and, and flooding. And uh, so uh, you can go to Planet of the Humans for a lot more on this story. Uh, well, I cannot do a story on conservationist weigh-in on how to prevent the next dude because nobody wants to hear it. Okay, I haven't heard from the Bougainville mine. Uh, where is that in Papua New Guinea in years? So, what's an update on the Bougainville mine? Decades old mine in Bougainville exacts devastating toll. Do you think so? A new report by the Human Rights Law Center in Australia details the continuing devastation wrought by a copper and gold mine that closed more than 30 years ago in the Papua New Guinea territory of Bougainville. Uh, the 17 year long operation of the mine generated more than a billion metric tons of mining waste which continues to seep into the region's water sources, fouling drinking water supplies and causing uh, disease. The British Australian mining company Rio Tinto divested from its majority stake of the local operating in 2016 and that says the governments of Bougainville and Papua New Guinea. Now the majority shareholders are the ones to address the problems. Hmm. But the Human Rights Law Center and other groups contend that Rio Tinto has the ultimate responsibility to facilitate and finance the cleanup. Oh yeah, really, uh, for 30 years they've been ignoring it. All right, well, once you thought that uh, you, we, we figured out a way to, once we figured out a way to prevent coral bleaching, uh, how about this one? Ocean deoxygenation could be silently killing coral reef scientists say. A new paper argues that ocean deoxygenation is, in fact, the biggest threat to coral reef survival, perhaps even more so than the threat of warming sea temperatures and acidification. Oxygen in the world's oceans has decreased by 2% since the middle of the last century due largely to climate change, agricultural runoff, and human waste. Uh, yep, more to come on that. Okay, Brazil's Ash Naninka people have gotten unprecedented compensation for deforestation on their land. How about, and an official, we're sorry, $3 million was the payoff by the logging company uh, owned by the family of the current governor of Acre. Yes, I bet. Uh, the indigenous people only agreed, you know, to this absolutely insulting payoff. The indigenous people only agreed with the negotiation because it included an official apology and a recognition for their, quote, 
enormous importance as guardians of the Amazon. Yes, as long as we're down there in Brazil, Brazilian indigenous chiefs act to halt illegal logging in historical landmark area. Yes, this is the Atlantic forest of Brazil, not the Amazon. A valuable Atlantic forest reserve in the historic setting of the discovery of Brazil, the land of the Patoxo is suffering from the illegal logging of fine woods used to produce handicrafts. Indigenous people themselves are also allegedly involved in the crimes. Yes, uh, imagine that. Uh, cattle ranches, eucalyptus farms, and coffee, papaya, and black pepper crops are the targets of other complaints. Uh, their lands are also suffering from the irregular spraying of pesticides and the damming of waterways. Do you think so? Uh, and then, well, how am I going to do the last story? Okay, I need to parse out the C word, we're going we're to wind up in Indonesia where we see warmer temperatures drive up dengue fever cases. Dengue fever has been on the rise in Indonesia this year. <laughs> Experts have attributed the increase to warmer average temperatures and unsanitary conditions that allow the mosquitoes carrying the virus to thrive. Authorities have ordered fumigation drives in response to the new outbreak, but health experts warn the mosquitoes are already developing a resistance to the insecticides. Yeppers, you, you get that bug. And they need to develop a resistance to the Sancho side. Anyway, guys, I will. Uh, I need to wrap up this uh, edition of uh, Collapse Chronicles from Manga Bay this week, uh, and I need to now that my buyer uh, has approved the uh, condition of this house. I have to go buy him two air conditioners and four smoke detectors. I got me to promise two more air conditioners. Uh, how many? This is one person going to be living in this house. Uh, at least three air conditioners going full blast here in the 96 degree weather in April. I suggest you get out there and enjoy April while you still can. Bye guys.